guys, it's Rosie. Welcome back. Today I'm going to be filming a super informal video. I'm probably not going to even edit it to be honest, so just be prepared. But I'm going to be sharing with you all of the books that I read in February. Um, if you didn't know, I am a very avid reader. Um, I definitely should spend more time doing other things, but I just love a good book. Um, February wasn't necessarily the best month for reading, to be honest, but um, there was a lot going on in February. I drove home from Florida, so that was a good several days that I don't know why I just don't really read in the car. Um, it could be because I would get car sick, but like we were on the highway the whole time, so I don't really know why I didn't really read. Um, but, and then I was just like getting back into school and everything um, when we got home. And also, um, one day a week I spend hiking the entire day. So I just haven't had that much time to, you know, like do my research and find a good book. But I have been to the library several times. And because all of these books were from the library, I do not have a single one of them to actually show you. So I'm gonna just have to pop up the covers on the screen for you. But yeah, um, I think honestly I went to the library probably four times in the last four weeks, maybe even more than that. Um, I may have a problem, but I think it's okay. Um, I just went yesterday and I went in for two books and I got five. So yeah, let's get started. Um, in February I read eight books, which was a little less than I read in January. I read 11 books, but I'm still way, way ahead of my goal. I didn't know how many books I would be able to read this year just because um, last year in the fall when I was sort of getting adjusted to my really heavy course load, I kind of stopped reading for a few months. Um, I was having some family issues and also just like a lot of schoolwork, so I didn't really read that much. But now I've kind of gotten into a routine and um, sadly my content has suffered because I feel like I really need reading to relax and stay engaged but also, you know, learn. It's, it's really fun to be honest. But yeah, the first book I read in February was Beach Read by Emily Henry, which ended up being one of my favorite books of the month. Um, this, if you haven't heard, it's about two people who knew each other in college, went their separate ways, they were kind of rivals, and then they came back together, they end up living next to each other in Michigan, like on the beach, and it's enemies to lovers, I guess, but they really... I really enjoyed the plot because both of them are authors and that is something very close to my heart and it just, I don't know, it was really interesting. It wasn't something that I'd seen that often. There's also some like family history there so there is stuff to unpack. It's pretty interesting. But from what I found, I read two Emily Henry books um, in February and it's kind of weird. I don't feel like the books fit their titles at all. Like. Beach read, the entire book, I think I remember them going to the beach like once or twice and I don't think they even like enjoyed it that much. So maybe it's just meant to be read on the beach, but I just don't think it fit its title very well. So I don't know what that's about or if that's just me. <laughs> okay, the next book, oh, I gave Beach read four stars. The next book I read was Genuine Fraud by E. Lockhart, which was my favorite book of the month. I gave that five stars. Um, I can't really tell you that much about it though, um, but basically there's this girl who assumes someone else's identity. Yeah, it's very interesting though, um, and I really like E. Lockhart's writing style. It doesn't seem like YA, but it's still... It's, I'm pretty sure that one's YA. I really, really loved We Were Liars as well, so I wanted to try another E. Lockhart book, and this one did not disappoint. Um, a book that did disappoint, though, was Reminders of Him by Colleen Hoover. I heard so much about this book, um, and it had just come out, so I was like, hey, they have it in my library, I'm gonna get it. So I took it out of the library, and I started reading it, and I don't want to offend anyone, but that book was just, like, downright depressing, and I have never been an outspoken fan of Colleen Hoover. I apologize. 
but this was probably the worst Colleen Hoover book I've read. Um, I know people really love it, but just the whole book was like depressing, but not like, I don't know, I couldn't, I didn't feel like I could um, connect to the characters at all. And by the time you got to the end, like everything's wrecked. And then in the last 20 pages, they try to fix it all and like, oh, suddenly it's happy. And it's like, huh? I, it just was totally not believable at the end. So I, I did not like that book at all. I probably would have given that a two and a half star. I gave it three star just to be generous on Goodreads, but I would say two and a half stars. The next book I read was The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes, which I gave a three and a half star. Um, this one was supposed to be, well, people had said on TikTok that it's like um, Knives Out, which is one of my absolute favorite movies. The poster's right there for it. I love Knives Out. And yes, it's like a similar um, idea, but Knives Out is a whole lot more believable and more grown up and I just felt like The Inheritance Games was really childish, which makes sense, it's YA, but it just was not exactly what I was expecting, it wasn't enough. So that was not my favorite thing. Um, it was cute, but just not quite right and it was not believable at all. So yeah, that one's three and a half stars. Then I read the second one, The Hawthorne Legacy, which I gave four stars because it was better as you got to know the characters more, but honestly they were both kind of cringy, so it was a nice idea, but not my favorite books ever. Next I read People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry, which is sort of, I don't know, there's two childhood friends and they've like always been the one constant in each other's lives, and then they aren't? I guess, and then they come back together, childhood friends to lovers. It's kind of boring. It wasn't my favorite thing ever, but it was fine. Um, I didn't really like, I didn't really like the main character very much. Um, I forget what her name is now, <laughs> but I didn't really like her that much. So I gave People we meet on vacation, um, three stars, because you kind of knew what was going to happen the whole way through. There were no, like, big plot, to, bleh, plot twists or anything special. It was just kind of like a generic romance. Again, I didn't really feel like it fit the title at all. Like, yes, they do discuss people that they meet on their trips, but it did not feel like the overarching theme. They didn't even, like, reference back to it very many times, so... I didn't feel like that title fit at all. The next book that I read was Beautiful World, Where Are You? by Sally Rooney. Um, this book was interesting. I had high expectations because I had just read Conversations with Friends in January, which I loved. I think that was a five-star read. Um, I had also read Normal People sometime last year, and I enjoyed that, but... Beautiful World, Beautiful World, Where Are You, did disappoint me a bit. Um, it just wasn't what I was looking for. Like, I, I don't know. It was a small town book, and I'm looking for a big world book. It was too, I don't know, just too small, I guess. I do like Sally Rooney's writing style, but it just wasn't my thing um, plot-wise. It wasn't as good as Conversations with Friends, which I would highly, highly recommend, and Normal People, which is also more, like, relatable for me at least. Um, but at the end of Beautiful World, Where Are You?, it was really weird. Like, there was this, I, I think it was the epilogue, but it brought everything back into perspective. Like, bring it broke the fourth wall with um, COVID and everything, and I was like, I do not want to read about that. So if I hadn't have read that part, it would probably be like maybe three and a half stars. But that part was just like, eh, I do, it was kind of icky. I don't want to read about that. I want to ignore, move past that stuff. I don't need it in my literature, which is my 
escapism and if I can't have that then like what so I just I, let me know what you think about people mentioning COVID in books it was just too fresh too new it should not be in <laughs> in my literature okay the last book that I read that I just finished last night I think was Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reed which I gave three stars. Um, I gave Beautiful World Where Are You three stars as well. Such a Fun Age was interesting. Um, I started out liking it more. I was thinking it was going to be a four star read as I was getting through it, but it kind of disappointed. Also I guess I didn't really give a summary of the last book. Basically there are... Sally Rooney is like famous for writing uh, literary fiction. It's basically just um, people talking to each other and just relationships and just generic mundane life. Um, I find it kind of interesting to like see a window into somebody else's life but I didn't feel like this book really did it for me so that's why that got a three star. Okay back to such a fun age. This book is about a African-American um, babysitter who works for this white family and she doesn't really think anything of it really. She lives her life, they live their life, and she babysits for um, this daughter, Briar, and sometimes the baby Catherine as well. And um, the mother of the children is this like, I don't know, she's kind of like an influencer but she's I don't know, not quite an influencer, kind of like a blogger, and um, I don't want to spoil too much of it, but it's basically people navigating, I don't want to spoil it, just like relationships and how racial differences can affect relationships. Um, yeah, I guess that's kind of what it's about. But there were some, like, red flags in this book that I just did not like. Um, like, I don't know, the, the main character, well, not the main character, the, um, the mother, she just, like, said some things that I was like, okay, that's, that's a little weird. I'm not going to say, like, specifically what it was, but some things that just did not sit right with me. So that's another reason why this book was not my absolute favorite, but... Yeah, um, March is looking like it's going to be a fantastic reading month. I already have like seven books sitting on my desk that I got out from the library. Um, the one that I started this morning is um, Project Hail Mary and I am so excited. I'm two chapters in and I really needed some good sci-fi. Like, I haven't read sci-fi in a very long time. I've been deep into like literary fiction and fantasy and whatever else, mysteries, stuff like that, but I do love myself a good science fiction book. So I have very high expectations. I think it has like four and a half stars on Goodreads, which is like Harry Potter level good. So we'll see. I will let you guys know. Um, let me know if you want to see another one of these just like book wrap up videos. I really enjoy doing it. I just get to like stream of consciousness, talk about what I thought of these books. Um, so yeah, I would probably expect me to have more books in March just because the giant stack is sitting there like, read me! Um, also after Project Hail Mary I'm going to be reading Ninth House by Leigh Bardugo so I'm excited about that too because I've been really loving um, like Dark Academia vibes. I'm pretty sure that's what that book's about. I've seen it a lot on the internet but I try to like stay away from um, content that goes too deep into books because I don't want to spoil it I want to hear like this is a good book and then I will look up like what the genre is and then I'll read it I try not to read any like summaries or spoilers any of that because I don't know I want to form the opinion of a book on my own I also think I have some Greek mythology which will be fun because I haven't read any Greek mythology in almost a year really since I read um, the Madeline Miller books which I really really enjoyed. Actually no, I read a few other 
Greek mythology books since then, but they weren't nearly as good as those. So I'm hoping this will live up to those books. But yeah, just let me know what you think of a book wrap-up video. Um, I had fun with it. Make sure to follow me on all social media at Rosie Revolts. Um, on my Instagram, you can see all of my daily reading. I'll show you like what I'm reading, when I finish a book, what my rating was. So you kind of get a little preview before it comes on my YouTube channel. But yeah, also make sure to um, buy my book at getoutdoorsbook.com and I will see you guys later. Bye!